Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa min wala. Subhanaka la ilma ila ila ma'allamtana inaka anta al-alimul hakim. Allahumma alimna ma'anfa'una wa anfa'ana bi ma'allamtana wa zidna ilma ya kareem. Continue with our study on al-arba'oon. Author by Muhammad ibn Islam al-Tusi rahimahullahu ta'ala. We start the statement of the author, Babu ma tajibu fihi zakah. Babu ma tajibu fihi zakah. The types of wealth that zakat is obligatory upon. قال المصنف حدثنا عبيد الله بن موسى قال أخبرنا سفيان عن عمرو بن يحيى أي المازني عن أبيه يحيى عن أبي سعيد الخدري قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس فيما دون خمسة أوسق صدقة وليس فيما دون خمس أواق صدقة وليس فيما دون خمس ذول صدقة طيب so this hadith mentions to us the three types of wealth that are agreed upon that zakat is due the first being uh, crops and fruits crops and and fruits or we can say agricultural produce so if you have agricultural produce that has been grown out from soil of course in the shafi'i madhab we divide it into two fruits and crops the types of fruits that can that zakat is due upon only two Dates and grapes. Thamaratu nakhri wa thamaratu al-kabra. As for the grains or the crops, then they have to be able to be stored and calculated as a volume. So wheat, rice, beans, corn, lentil, chickpea, etc. These things are all going to fall under uh, the, the produce that zakat is due upon. So if it's not uh, capable of being stored, then the zakat will not be due upon it because if it can't be stored then it, it means that it's, at, it's under the risk of being spoiled right so for example method banana peach apples right honey these things are not uh, going to be given zakat upon as thamara uh, as timar right or as zuru but they may be as old tijara as trade commodities طيب. and the reason why is because these products can't be stored the banana if you keep it um, in a place for a few days it goes it goes rotten طيب. you can't store it unlike the hubub the grains like beans and rice and so on طيب. now the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa gave us the nisab so in these ahadith he gave us the nisab the quota that a person must reach in order for the zakat to be obligatory upon him and that is uh, with regards to agricultural produce خمسه اوسق five اوسق واوسق جمع وسق and when you convert it to modern uh, monetary or uh, modern uh, uh, measurements, it's equivalent to around 600 or 650 or so uh, kilograms. 650 or so kilograms of agricultural produce. So if you produce 650 kilograms of agricultural produce as your harvest, then عليه زكاة فيه زكاة. How much do you pay? It depends upon whether it was irrigated manually or irrigated uh, naturally. If it was naturally irrigated, meaning that it was watered by rainfall or river without the use of um, machines then fihi al-usr you pay 10 percent and if it was manually irrigated meaning you needed to use machinery in order to irrigate these crops then fihi uh al usr meaning five percent so let's say you produced 1000 kilograms of uh, rice as part of the harvest now once that harvest is done as the message as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned so on the day in which uh, the grains have become hardened and are able to be harvested and you've harvested it and you've removed the chafe and so on and you've weighed it and you found that it's come to a thousand kilograms you will now look at whether you manually irrigated it or naturally irrigated it if you say that i naturally irrigated it meaning it was naturally irrigated then you'll pay 10 percent you'll pay 100 kilograms and if it was uh, manually irrigated you'll pay 50 kilograms of that rice and you have to pay the rice meaning you pay in kind you do not pay the value so you do not say method and i'm going to pay the worth or the value of 50 kilograms of rice La. you have to pay 50 kilograms of rice or 100 kilograms of rice طيب. likewise you can't say i'm going to pay uh, the equivalent of it in another type of food that you have to give it in rice not in another type of food or in another monetary value uh, it's studied and learned in the books of fiqh in more detail so that's the first point. لَيْسَ فِيمَا دُونَ خَمْسَةِ أَوْسُقِينَ 
sadaqah. Tayyib. Then the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, wala fi, wa laysa fi ma duna khamsi awaqin sadaqah. And there isn't below, so meaning, uh, so, the, so the first point, if it's below the nisab, la zakata fi. So if a person has 400 kilograms of rice, then there's no zakat to a point. He can pay it off a sadaqah, la ishkala fi dharik. But there's no zakat obligatory upon him. And then he says, wa laysa fi ma duna khamsi awaqin sadaqah. And there isn't any zakat below khams awaq. Awaq jam'u uqiyah. And this refers to the silver. Silver. Meaning, uh, five awaq of silver is the nisab. What's that equivalent to? One uqiyah is equivalent to 40 dirhams. One uqiyah is equivalent to 40 dirhams. So 40 times five gives you 200 dirhams. Which corresponds to today 595 grams of silver. So the nisab, the quota for silver, is 595 grams so if you have 595 grams worth of silver or you have um, uh, money or currency which is equivalent to 595 grams of silver in value then you are to pay off zakat how much do you pay 2.5 percent 2.5 percent so if a person has a thousand grams of, of silver he will pay 2.5 percent of that of that 1000 grams of uh, of silver and of course today because of the value of silver has diminished a lot the ulama they mentioned that you instead uh, compare your currency to the value of gold and not the value of silver and the value of gold the, 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 the zakat that is due upon gold the nisab that, that gold has is um, or dinar, with one dinar or one mithqal is equivalent to 4.25 grams so you multiply 4.25 by 20 gives you 85 uh, 85 grams worth of gold so if you have 85 gram, 85 grams worth of 24 karat gold uh, or money or currency which is equivalent to 85 or it's equivalent to the value of 85 grams of 24 karat gold then you pay zakat upon that wealth you pay zakat upon that wealth how much? 2.5% 2.5% then the messenger so meaning, if a person has, uh, regarding the second point, if a person has below the nisab of gold or the nisab of silver, لا زكاة فيه أو لا زكاة عليه Then he says, وليس في ما دون خمس ذود صدقة And there isn't zakat due upon anything less than five camels. Meaning, if a person has less than five camels, four camels, or three camels, or two camels, or one camel, there is no zakat due upon him. But if he hits five, then he has to pay uh, a shah he has to pay shah kama huwa ma'ruf and if he reaches 10 he has to pay 2 a shah and then 3 uh, if he reaches 15 3 shah and then 20 4 shah and then 25 it changes right you pay a bint makhaf and uh, we know that we learn that in the books of fiqh in more detail wa laysa fi ma duna khamsi dhawdin sadaqa and of course the zakat here is, uh, is referring to zakatu naam the zakat due upon cattle and the cattle of three types you have the uh, you have the uh, uh, the the the, the uh, the camel, which is mentioned in the hadith here, and you have the baqar and you have the ghanam. And the ghanam divided into two of dha'an wa al-ma'az. Of course, when it comes to the nisab for uh, cows, it's 30. The nisab for cows is 30. You, you, when you have 30 uh, cows, you pay a tabia, right? In, um, and when you have uh, the nisab for uh, the nisab for um, uh, the shia or the, the, the ghanam, it's 40. Right, the quarter is forty. So if you hit forty, you have to pay shat. You have to pay a shat. And with the camels, the minimum nisab is five. So you have a minimum level. You have a minimum quota for camels five. Once you hit five, now zakat can begin. When you hit thirty cows, now the zakat can begin. When you hit forty uh, ghanam, meaning sheep or goats, you've now hit a level of when where zakat can be due. And of course, with regards to the sheep, when you hit forty, you pay a shat. And if it goes beyond that, meaning up until 121, right? When you hit 121, you now pay two Shia. And then when you hit, uh, uh, when you hit, uh, uh, when you hit uh, uh, um, uh, 201, that's three, three Shia, right? And then from 400 onwards, you pay Arba Shia. And then fi kulli mi'ati Shia. Kama huwa ma'ruf wa musadawun fi kutub al fiqh As for the cow, the awal nisab is uh, 30, you hit a, you, you, get, you pay a tabi'a, and then when you uh, when you go beyond that to 40, you pay a musinna, and then ala thalika thaqis, meaning for every uh, 30 you pay a tabi'a, and for every 40 you pay a musinna, 
And as for the ibil, awa ibn ashabiha, khamsun, right? And then you pay in it a shah. And then if you have 10, you pay two shah. Three, uh, 15, three shah. Uh, 20, four shah. 25, bint makhab. And then 36, you pay bint labun. And then 46, you pay hiqa. And then uh, 61, you pay jada'a. And 76, you pay two bint labuns. And 91, you pay hiqqatan. And uh, 121, you pay three bint labuns. And then for every 40, you pay a bint labun. And for every 50, you pay a hiqqa. Kamahu ma'awuf. Right, you divide the uh, numbers, the whole numbers that ends in zeros into sets of 50s and 40s. So if you're a math and you have the number uh, 200, for example, you can divide it into four sets of 50s or five sets of 40s. So you can pay potentially either five bint laboons or you pay four hiqqas. كما هو معروف وهو مسطور في كتب الفقه. طيب. So محل الشاهد here is the minimum nisabs for the three uh, types of wealth that is agreed upon by the ulama that zakat is due upon. The uh, what we call Al-Athman, um, uh, which is of course Al-Dhahb al fidda Likewise, Al-Na'am, uh, uh, which refers to the um, uh, the camels, the cows, and the uh, sheep and goats. And then you have, of course, the crops, the agricultural produce. طيب. هذا الله أعلم مصطفي بإذن الله. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.